Remember me, though I have to say goodbye. Remember me. Don't let it make you cry. For even if I'm far away, I hold you in my heart. I sing a secret song to. You. Hello, everybody, and welcome to my review of the new animation movie from Pixar and Disney. Coco, directed by Lee Unkrich. So, Coco, this is an interesting Pixar movie. Um, funny story, this film has only just been released in the UK in January 2018, whereas in November of 2017 it was released in the US and other countries. So, if you're wondering why my review of Coco is very late, it's because it hasn't been released yet. I, have, I wasn't able to see it until today. Um, so, yeah... Um, yeah, I, I, I'm going to, I'm, I'm excited to talk about this one. So, um, this is the first Pixar movie since Cars 3, and, um, thank God. <laughs> so basically, the, the story of Coco revolves around this young, aspiring musician, um, young Mexican boy named Miguel, who, um, has musical ancestry, and, um, he believes that, um, this famous mu musician called Ernesto de la Cruz is his great-great-grandfather. And he somehow <laughs> ends up in the land of the dead. And he goes in search for his great-great-grandfather to become an aspiring musician. And that's kind of the basis of the plot without giving any spoilers away. So, yeah. Um, Coco, this is a very... Um, strange Pixar movie. I think that's the best word to describe it, is that it's very strange. It's got a very strange story. It's not a very, it's not a movie that you would, um, you'd think that they would be so bold to make. And it's actually a rather impressive in that regard, and that it's very bold. Um, after the disappointment that was Cars 3, I was just hoping for this movie to be better than that, and it's way better than Cars 3. Oh yes, way better. Because, you know, Pixar, I mean, in my opinion, they are the world's, the other industry's leading animation studio. They have made so many classics. They are the most consistent animation studio. I mean, you have obviously Laker and DreamWorks and Aardman and all of those, but Pixar, I feel, are the strongest because they know how to cut through to your emotions. Um, I'm not saying they haven't all made good movies. There have been some duds. I mean, well, I just said Cars 3 wasn't particularly good. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't good either. So Coco, for me, I mean, I saw the trailer and I thought, it's going to be an either-or movie. It's either going to be good or it's either not. And thankfully, it's very good. <laughs> it's a very good film. Um, again, I was very surprised by it. I was actually kind of polarised by this film, how insane it is. It's, it's insane how... This is like a almost a commemoration, really, for the Day of the Dead. James Bond commemorated Day of the Dead in Spectre, and Pixar have now commemorated uh, the Day of the Dead with this film. <laughs> and it's a, a very beautiful, lavish movie. What I love about this film is the sense of culture, the sense of the, the Mexican culture and the Day of the Dead celebration. It's um, It's a very, very colourful film. It's a very vibrant film. It's very lavish. All the colours and the textures, enhanced by the amazing animation from Pixar, help to create this real sense of culture. They, they've they captured this beautifully. It is a beautifully rendered film. It looks so sharp. Some of the shots look insanely good. And no wonder, it, apparently it took them six years to make this movie, and no wonder, because it looks, it looks so good. Um... <clears throat> I have to say, I mean, um, I I was I was very surprised <laughs> at this movie. I wasn't sure how it was going to be because the concept is strange. I mean, it it is just strange, you know, how he ends up in the land of the dead and then you know he has to try and get his get his way home, um, <clears throat> and he learns uh, a lot about family. The movie, like Pixar always do, they incorporate this big message, um, and this one is another message about family and how sometimes. You know, you can't always have both your dream and your family. You've got to prioritise and you've got to put one before the other. It's okay to have dreams. It's okay to have aspirations. But, uh, 
music in this movie is seen as sort of a curse, as in the theme of music as a thematic theme is seen as, as a curse upon the family. And it's a very intriguing setup. I thought the setup for this movie was really quite good. I, mean, I was like, wow, this is an interesting concept. Why do they hate music so much? I mean, the movie gets you into, into grips, you know, you're hooked from the very beginning. And <clears throat> I certainly enjoyed, uh, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> oh, cough. I certainly enjoyed seeing Miguel's journey and how he essentially comes of age as well. Um, like Inside Out with Riley when she come, came of age. This is a story of how Miguel comes of age. He realises that there's more to life than just his own dreams and aspirations. He realises the importance of his family. At first he doesn't really like his family because they're just smashing on his dream. And, they, and he, you know, understandably so. So... In that sense, you could say, I mean, the story is very well told, as always. Pixar are very good at telling stories, uh, apart from the rare exceptions of the Cars trilogy. Um, I think that there is a slight sense of predictability, which is a slight disappointment with this movie. It's not perfect. This movie is not a masterpiece. It's not the 10 out of 10 masterful shit that we've always had from Pixar. It is flawed. There are some minor flaws with this movie. It isn't perfect, but it's very good. Um, the storytelling, whilst very well handled, is kind of predictable, which is a shame. Uh, well, certain things aren't predictable, but mostly, yeah, you can kind of see where it goes. I mean, but when it came to the second half, and when we discovered a lot, and we, well, we discovered the truth behind his family and, and everything, I thought, okay, but I wasn't, I wasn't like, I was like, oh, okay, that's, you know, fair enough. I wasn't like, oh my god, I didn't, I didn't see that coming. I was like, okay, kind of saw it coming, but okay. It didn't, it didn't anger me or anything. I just thought, come on, Pixar. It, it, the movie played it safe. The storytelling was too safe. It didn't take enough risks for me. I wanted to be surprised in the story, and I wasn't. I just kind of saw what I saw in the trailer, and I also kind of, I predicted what was going to happen. Uh, I'm not going to say what actually happens, um, because, you know, you, you're assuming you'll want to go and see Coco, but, um, <clears throat> you know, that's, that's, that is a slight problem for me. Um, despite that, the movie's gets off to a pretty good start. I mean, it is one hour, 45 minutes, so it's, it's one of the more longer Pixar movies, but it doesn't feel too long. It moves at a good pace, so that's good. Um, as I said, the animation is, is, is stunning, stunning, absolutely stunning. And I think the best thing to praise this movie for is the visuals. The visuals are just gorgeous. I mean, the colours, the textures, everything. This is the most colourful movie that Pixar have ever made. I mean, wow. I'm, I'm blown away by the animation. The, the quality of animation. Think back to the original Toy Story movie, which came out nearly, what, what 23 years ago? I mean, that was dated. I mean, that's dated, but it's still authentic. And look how far we've come. Look at this. Look at this. I would be surprised if this doesn't get nominated for, like, Best Visual Effects or something, you know, because it's, it's so colourful. Okay, let's talk about some of the cast. Um, I don't know any of them. I don't know any of them. I'm assuming they're all um, Mexican. Um, the one that we should talk about, Anthony Gonzalez, who voices Miguel. Miguel's a very good protagonist. He's a very interesting character. Um... He's just a boy, and he just wants to do what he loves, and he's a very relatable boy in that sense, and then he has to grow up and realise that, you know, sometimes family is a bit more important than just, you know, what you want to do, and a uh, rather predictable <coughs> message, but still, um, it is it is good, and he is a good character, and he does learn his lesson, and he does eventually realise how um, important like uh, his family are, and... Um, his um, song at the very end of the movie is a testament to that. The ending of this movie moved me. I actually had a little bit of a tear in my eyes, so... Oh, Pixar, you... Oh, you tugged it again! <laughs> but yeah, no, that was very lovely. Um, Gael Garcia Bernal as Hector. Hector's a very good um, character. He's... At first you think he's kind of a wacky sidekick. It kind of reminded me of um, Ratatouille with Remy and Linguini. Linguini was, you know, the one who would... <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't resist doing that impression. Um, he's kind of... He's a bit floppy. He moves around like a like a rag doll. 
and um, but he he does he is a character that has a lot of dramatic weight, and you do realise um, how important he is to the story. I thought he was just going to be a sidekick, but he actually turns out to be very crucial to the story, and they did a good job of um, including him there. I thought he was very um, he was a very good very good character, and his relationship with Miguel is very good and kind of the beating heart of the movie really. <clears throat> Benjamin Bratz as Ernesto de la Cruz. Um, Benjamin Bratz as Ernesto de la Cruz. Uh, wonderful as Ernesto de la Cruz. Um, <clears throat> his, uh, his character turns out to be very interesting. Um, Alana Eubank as Imelda. She's very good. Um, Rene Victor as Abuelita. Um, Jamie Camilla's papa. There's there's many more, but um, one other thing I should mention about Coco is that the characters, I didn't particularly find these characters to be very memorable, um, other than Miguel obviously and Hector and Dante the dog. Uh, Dante the dog was funny, <coughs> I, and uh, other than uh, Ernesto of course, I I just found them to be very. Very just, meh. They're just nothing. They're, you know, there's too many of them as well. There's just, I mean, I know that in traditional, you know, Mexican families, there are a lot of people. That's fine. But to make them individual characters um, was always going to be tricky. And I think they don't quite do it for me. Um, I just think that there's nothing really that stands out about them. They're, I mean, they're, you know, some of them are good, but some of them aren't. I think there's just too many of them. There's just too many characters. And I think um, the movie kind of suffers. I kind of got confused at points. I didn't know who was who, and I didn't know how they were related to each other. Um, I, I mean, I got it in the end, but afterwards I thought, hang on, why was that so difficult to work out? It shouldn't have been. So that is another problem that works against the movie for me, I'm, I'm afraid. Um, and I do also quite like the, the sense of adventure as well, like um, with Miguel and... Hector running around in the land of the dead to try and find Ernesto de la Cruz. There's also kind of a, a quest movie as well, um, as well as a musical movie. It's uh, It's got some very good music in it. The film's score is composed by Michael Giacchino, would you believe? I mean, how many scores has this guy done? It's, it's incredible. Um, but the actual songs in the movie are you know, obviously all Mexican influenced and they're very good. They are very impressive and the soundtrack is, and, and score are brilliant, as always. Uh, and I think the direction by Lee, Lee Unkrich is very good. It's a well-directed movie. It's a very well-directed movie. But I just think the story is a bit predictable. And it does let the movie down a little bit. It's not a masterpiece. It is not a masterpiece. I cannot, I cannot try, I can't force myself to love it. You know, I do really like the movie and I admire its ambition. And, you know, it's a visual treat to the eye, and I think kids will enjoy it. Especially if you're into music. Actually, the Mexicans will really love it, because I mean, it's, all, it's all for them, really. It's all made for them. Um, I mean, it kicks the living shit out of Cars 3, so thank fuck for that. <laughs> and the voice cast do all do a good job. The movie's paced very well. It's a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun, with some emotional moments, and the resolution of the movie, the climax is entertaining, and... Um, the very last moments of the movie, um, where Miguel plays his his song, well, or the most iconic song of the film, I'll say that much. Um, that was very moving. So it's basically it's it's classic Pixar. It's what you would expect, and I think it's really really enjoyable. So <clears throat> I'm gonna rate Coco a nine out of ten. Remember me Though I have to say goodbye Remember me So yeah, and I was um, I was surprised there was no short film before the movie I think actually the reason why that would be was because I heard in the US when the film came out there was this Frozen short that ran for like 20 minutes before the film Coco and a lot of people uh, were really disappointed in that because it was too long and it just pissed them off so much. And my friend Alan Kalo, who is from the US, he went to see Coco and he had to experience that short film and it ruined his experience of seeing Coco, which was a shame. But um, I think, Alan, you should give it another chance. If they've taken away 
the short film uh, they have done for the UK, if they've taken the short film away in the US, I would recommend you going back to see it again. Because I think you, you'd, you'd be missing out. I think you've got to see it on the big screen to really appreciate it. And I will be adding it to my Pixar collection. I have the well, most of the Pixar movies on Blu-ray, the ones I, I like. There are a few that I don't own. So, that's Coco. Um, I know I said in my Cars 3 review that I was going to update my Pixar movies ranking after I'd seen Coco. That was before I knew Coco was going to be released in January of this year. Yeah. Um, I thought that Coco was going to be out in November of last year in the UK. But it wasn't. It was pushed back to January. So I've just decided amongst myself to basically wait until The Incredibles 2 has come out. And I've seen that and reviewed it because that is the next... Pixar movie to come out. I can't wait for The Incredibles 2. That is going to be brilliant. I really hope it is. Um, so then I will review The Incredibles 2 and then I will do, I will update my Pixar ranking because there are a few um, slots that I want to swap around uh, as well. I have reviewed all the other Pixar movies. I have the Cars 3 review on this channel. All the other reviews are on the Ollie Pajak channel and this will be added to the playlist of Pixar reviews. So yes, Coco. <laughs> I really enjoyed it, and I would recommend you you take your kids to see it. I think they'll enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. It's it's got some some moments of comedy as well. It's um, Hector can be quite a funny character, and Dante the dog is is a is a very uh, is a very good character. So that's my review of Coco, guys. Stay tuned for future reviews. And until then, thank you all for watching. As always, I'm Mr. Thomas Eleven. See ya.